So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out for a few. Let's jump right in here. I had a, a friend of mine get in touch recently who's also a drone operator, and they were asking me about pricing their ortho mosaic models. And you know, normally when I'm pricing something out, it's for a larger uh, set of data, not just ortho mosaic models. So the question was kind of interesting to me, and um, my friend said, you know, I'm making this Excel sheet, and what do you think? What should my pricing be? And something was left out of his Excel sheet. So by the way, for those of you new to this, ortho mosaic models, we can make two-dimensional models of locations with our drones by flying our drone back and forth and collecting a bunch of overlapping images that we then process in software like WebODM or PIX4D or drone deploy, um, you get the idea. There's several uh, several companies out there. Now, the question is interesting because it's a legit question. Uh, you know, what do I price this at? And one of the things that my friend forgot about was elevation. So normally we're looking at acreage, we're looking at flight time, we're looking at number of images uh, rendered, and um, a lot of what we do is also based on our altitude as to how much detail of a job site we're getting. So rather than belabor this, I've got the iPad right here. So we're going to pop this open and I'm going to utilize one of many mapping apps that I use and we're going to use map pilot. So let me get this screen shared for you. And let's see, there's my Mac studio. So now we've got the uh, iPad coming up on screen. And so here's my regular iPad and I've got my drone tools right here. And one of my drone tools is Map Pilot Pro. So we're going to do a new mission here, and I'm going to explain. Um, you're going to see exactly how things change when we change a few parameters um, for our flight with Map Pilot Pro. So let's do a new mission here. And I'm going to zoom this out, and we're going to do something a little fun. We're going to use a location that I haven't used in quite a while which is the Granite Dells and Watson Lake. We've got some beautiful, absolutely gorgeous rock formations and cliffs and amazing recreation. So what I'm pulling up on screen for you is the Granite Dells in Prescott, Arizona and Watson Lake. Now, let's say that we would like to document some of these cliffs right in here. Um, maybe we want to make a 3D model that would be really cool or just that 2D ortho mosaic model. Uh, when we fly with Map Pilot Pro or Drone Harmony or Drone Deploy or PIX4D's Capture, um, we're blocking out a flight area, we're getting a bunch of images, and then those images are put together in one of these processing pack packages. So my friend said to me, you know, uh, 0 to 10 acres this, uh, 10 to 20 acres this, and so I dropped him a note back and I said, there's a little more. We can't, it's not so easy to make some cookie cutter pricing here. And I'm going to show you why. So on screen right now, we're going to document this set of cliffs in here. Okay. So I am going to tap where my launch location is most likely going to be, which is in the middle of these rock formations here. Now, what I'm going to do, so that was just a double tap on Map Pilot Pro. And what we're going to do now, so I'm doing all of this on the iPad, is I'm going to tap and hold a corner. So now you see this uh, orangey yellow uh, button right here. I'm going to do a segment. We're going to go up to these really cool cliffs that are right over the dam. So maybe we're going to capture some of the dam. We're going to go right up this line of rocks in here. Let me, there we go. So we're getting some of the cliffs in there. And I'm going to, Whoops, I'm sliding the wrong thing. I can move that purple dot back and forth after. So this isn't a perfect rectangle here, but this is looking pretty good. And why I chose to use Map Pilot Pro here is pretty straightforward. Uh, Map Pilot Pro gives me some interesting information while I'm setting these things up. So on the left hand side, I tapped over here on the left hand side and we have area. So we're covering 27.27 acres if we go with this particular layout. The distance is gonna be 8.3 miles, 8.4 miles of flight. The suggested path speeds, this is being suggested by the application, is 6.9 miles per hour. The length of this flight is going to be 75 minutes. 
and we're going to utilize five batteries and we're going to generate 1300 photos that's a lot of photos so if we were to go with this setting um i'd get back to my friend and say you, you've got over an hour of flight time here you're going to capture all of these so you know what's the value of your time your drone batteries and all that that's going to factor in now these numbers can change very easily i'm going to slide this back in so i just slid that back in and we're going to slide down the top area because there's a couple other factors here so number one we've got the flight altitude at 98 feet so that's pretty close to ground level actually so we're going to be getting a lot of detail we also have some good overlap here 70 over 70. so the images are going to overlap each other fairly well We've also got a normal flight mission where it's a back and forth pattern. If we make some changes to this, it's going to change our flight time, our mileage, everything. Now, one of the things that we need to know from our customers, how much detail are you looking for? Are we trying to get in here and make a perfect 3D model and 2D model of this location? Um, are we documenting this? just to show the overall terrain, maybe changes in the terrain over time. And all of that's gonna be affected in here. So now I'm going to tap that 98 feet above ground level. And let's say that we would like to fly this at 200 feet above ground level. And above ground level, starting from where my purple dot is, where I'm launching from. Now we've changed that to 200 feet. I'm gonna give it a tap take a look at the lines here before we made this change we had a lot of lines really close together line 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 and that was you know taking a ton of our time right let's slide this back up for a moment and let's tap over on the left hand side again it's still the 27 acres the distance that we're flying we were flying a lot more before and now it's down to 4.24 miles it is now suggesting a path speed now that the drone is higher we're getting less detail. We're getting bigger coverage area. Um, it's saying here the path speed is going to be 14 miles an hour. And now the duration of this is 20 minutes instead of 75 minutes. So now it's also telling us that it thinks two batteries will do it. And it says, in this case, we're going to generate 353 images. That's a lot less images. So the higher we go up, the less detail we get, but the more coverage area we can get. So back to my friend's question. My friend said, so what should I charge for one to 10 acres or 10 to 20 or so on and so on? And the answer is it's not cookie cutter. You're going to need to have a conversation with your clients about the area that you are flying for them and what they want to achieve. If it's just a two dimensional orthomosaic of the location, to give them a feel and flavor for that location, maybe we don't need as much detail. If you say to me, Rich, we're gonna do an ortho mosaic, but we would also like to extract good information for doing a 3D model, maybe I'm gonna go up here and say, right now we have the normal mission selected. If we wanna get all the faces of the rocks and really build an interesting 3D model now, what, while we can still generate our 2D model, maybe we no longer want to use the normal mission and we want to use a grid mission. Now I've selected the grid mission because now it's going to be going east, west, and north, south. We're going to get coverage of a lot of these uh, rock formations, right? But let's pop over here again. So we need some changes. Um, still the same exact acreage, but now 8.62 miles when we had this on the normal setup it was now four point something miles pass speed 13.8 miles per hour and now our duration is 40 minutes it was 20 minutes we basically doubled up our flights didn't we because we're doing a grid now so we've doubled everything up so now 40 minutes and it's suggesting approximately three batteries and once again now we have more images 720 images so to have a boxed price for a client that if you are between 10 and 20 acres or 20 and 30, so in our case, 20 and 30, um, it's going to be $800 uh, a flight, uh, $1,200 a flight, whatever it is you're thinking. Um, you need to know from the client, what is the use case here? Am I just doing a two-dimensional ortho mosaic? 
are we just tracking progress on a construction site or on a beautiful recreation site like this right here? You know, what we're wanting to do um, is going to depend on client answers. So if we go back in and the client says, yeah, Rich, you know, we just, uh, we just want a two-dimensional model and we're just showcasing the area and showcasing what's happening over time. So I'm gonna go ahead with that normal mission. I'm gonna keep my overlap to about 70 and 70. If we add more overlap, we will also get more detail and better alignment as well, okay? Now, with all this said, let's take a look here. So now we're at 4.3 miles of flight, 13.8 miles per hour, 20 minutes of time in the air. So potentially two batteries and 362 images. Let's change this just a bit more. Let's say they just want an ortho mosaic. They want to do an overlay on Google Earth. Maybe that's what they're up to. So if they don't want the highest level of detail, we can raise our elevation a little bit more, provided also if we're in controlled airspace that we're authorized to do this. So let's bring it up to 250 feet above our launching point in this scenario. The path speed has changed 17.7 miles an hour. You'll notice 3.3 miles flown now. Duration, 12 minutes. Hey, we're into one battery now. Um, this is great. This is going to be really snappy and quick. What if, you know, they, they really don't want a lot of detail. They just want to show the overall location. Well, let's go ahead and bump that elevation. So we're shooting from even higher. So now we're 300 feet above ground level. Now, flight time is 10 minutes and change. Uh, the distance is only three minutes of flight now. Path speed has been bumped up once again. So the higher we are, uh, the broader area that we are capturing. And now we're down to 166 images. Whereas when we were first looking at this, we were looking at it at 98 feet. So, you know, let's just put it back to 100 here. So 100 feet above ground level, because we want lots and lots of detail. And look at those changes. Duration 69 minutes. Uh, path speed has been slowed way down. Our flight distance is a lot more. So the question that my friend asked has a lot of, well, if you do it this way or you do it this way, it is going to depend. So can we make a cookie cutter ortho mosaic flight for construction sites or residential sites or um, infrastructure sites for, you know, county and state government, for instance, um, this is going to depend a lot on what they are looking to achieve. So one of the big things that you have to keep in mind, other than all these cool tools we have, because we want to go fly the drones, run the autonomous software, all these cool toys we have, we have a series of questions. So we need to be investigators as well. So when we're talking to our clients about their needs, we need to find out what type of ortho, what type of video, what type of still? So this question goes beyond just what should I price for an ortho mosaic and goes into what should I price for a full project? And if you'd like to see some more videos about full projects, you can pop on by to classes.azdrone.net. And at that website, we do have a series of 17 courses. We talk about post part 107, what you do after you've passed your part 107 how we make money with our drones and the sample projects of what we're doing, how we utilize applications like MapPilot Pro or Drone Harmony or Pix4D's Capture or Drone Deploy's Capture. We talk about those things as well. We show you several different types of projects. We also talk about software like Metashape and WebODM and Drone Deploy software. We, we cover a lot of these topics to get you going if you're new to doing construction monitoring or infrastructure monitoring, whatever it might be, um, those classes should get you well on your way. So classes.azdrone.net. So go check it out and be sure to check each of our classes because they do have free previews. So once again, pricing is going to be subject to a lot of questions being answered by our clients. So make sure that you put your investigator hat on before you start throwing prices around.